So we've got ISM services, and I think a lot of people are really looking at gold. You've had lots of Chinese buying of gold and some other central banks uh, globally taking it as well. Massive, massive rally from gold over time. I mean, you really saw it pick up pace here over about 1800 bucks per ounce, uh, all the way up to 2450 So a really, really long and wide curve. <clears throat> and now what you're seeing is, is very interesting, and we'll cover it. It could be the case that ISM manufacturing PMIs for June does something because it's based with the US. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's basically the Institute for Supply uh, Management. And it's basically an outlook of the state of the economy in regards to the manufa manufacturing sector. So what's basically produced. Higher reading bullish for the dollar, negative reading uh, bearish for the dollar. Um, but your gold has been largely unpegged. I mean, if you if you compare this to, let's say, the dollar index directly, you can see that they're not following, you know, exactly the same correlation. Some days they both go up, some days they both go down, um, and it's much more here and there. Gold used to be far more traditional um, safe haven asset, but now, like I said, it's completely moved around. So you have to be careful trading it. Um, you can see what's going on here is just this tentative drop. You know, there's just this waning of demand after that long period that took you sort of 600 or so, $650 straight to the upside. If you look at these highs, you know, you can draw a very easy and simple trend line and you can just see what's going on. If you whack a line at the bottom, just to show you really the flat lining of demand, you can see it slowly, slowly trickling to the downside. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if you do end up just coming up in line with this again before you ultimately see some kind of further movement back like this okay and ultimately perhaps down here again i would expect this isn't really sustainable whatsoever i mean you've just hit it so many times and there's an awful lot of level decay so if the sentiment bias does continue like this wouldn't be shocked entirely if you come back slightly okay and you end up down here and you've got reasonably reliable support over this side to go with that so it could form the basis for um, any kind of long entries, if you like. Um, but you'll have to get there first. I did make a call on this recently. Um, I believe it was about short, what day was this? Friday. Um, I had it long down here. Actually, that was when I called it. I mentioned it long there. Um, and I said to kill it off, and hopefully you did. You can go and look at that post on my profile. It's there. Um, and you can see that it's just rising straight away. There isn't this massive downpour there, which is why I wouldn't be shocked if you end up beating this high and then you come just back in line with what you've seen previously. It's really important to note here that these falls, which you can see every single time you have them, um, they're very harsh and they're very sudden. So that's the kind of thing you would like to catch if you were trading on the short side. Okay, obviously, you would want to short when you're going to get the, the largest volume of a fall down. Um, and if you stop somewhere around there first before ultimately getting down there, it wouldn't shock me either because there's lumps and lumps and lumps of key price action, key support um, over here. Okay, you can see that if I just pull an arrow out or a red arrow, whatever you want to, uh, to use, just to have a look. And you can see there's various areas of this, various lumps. OK, um, at this point, you can see your stock oscillator is probably going to curl up like this and then, you know, go in line with that longer term trajectory around here. Um, so no buying, no selling really at this point. I wouldn't really um, like it either way, just the way it sits at the moment. It's just very much in between either extreme. Um, like I said, you've got your support down here. OK. Um, key support has been hit many times. Don't expect it to hold. And then you've got your um, your downtrending market to the to the upside. Okay. So to be absolutely clear, I like it short up there. Key two hundred MA might creep up, and I like it long there. If you do get out of this, I wouldn't consider adding until you get well in line with this previous high. And don't be surprised if it does break that previous high. There's nothing stopping that happening. Okay, you can't act like that as the eventual wall of price that is never, ever going to be, uh, be beaten because it can. Um, but I don't want to add between them because if you look between this level and where we are, or well, where we would be at that point, 
there's nothing in the way. There's no key price action between those two areas. And therefore, I wouldn't be shocked if price drifts from one to the other. And it's the same really here, to be honest. If you do come under, again, there's nothing 2,220 and 2,290. There's nothing particularly um, in the way giving you a wall to, to stop that happening. All right. And that would be my eventual long zone. So we've got one up there, about 243, and you've got one down here, about 2220. And those really form the extremes. You know, you might see something like that, okay, um, and ultimately down there, or vice versa. You might hit this level and then make your way back to the trend line again. Unless you get some kind of significant change in probably the state of the global economy, you won't see a massive difference. And I think a lot of, in many cases, that just comes down to the US. Um, you've got a bit from President Lagarde later, but, you know, not hugely concerning in this regard. Um, if you keep getting this propping up, okay, there was some news that actually came out um, relatively recently, and it was in regards to, um, to uh, China and buying gold. And um, there's a big article on it actually that came out today, which you can go and read. Um, it's quite concerning because the more and more they buy, obviously, um, it's sucking up the demand um, and lessening the supply. So that's the key sentiment driver, really. If you get that continuing or you get some kind of news report that says, OK, the buying is continuing, then you may see it go higher. And that's why you have to be careful trading gold, especially at these levels when it's unpegged and it doesn't really have a clear sentiment driver. You know, it's not telling you exactly um, out there on many news outlets why it's rallying so much. Then you want to just be careful, perhaps consider halving your size or quartering or thirding or whatever you want to do just to be on the safe side. So wait for ISM to come out, see what happens. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget you can trade with me live on Zoom every day underneath. See you in the next one.